Logan Gilderman on the right, but always a political left. We held over David Daggett from an earlier segment. He's helping out today on the round table. Keith Granberry, founder of Helping Hands Consultants. Guys, let's get to it. North Carolina ranks third in the nation for pet deaths in shelters. Meanwhile, Best Friends Animal Society is lobbying for all shelters to be no kill by 2025. Guys, would you like to see our state legislature pass a, re a law requiring all animal shelters to be no kill? And do you think they will? Okay. I'd, I'd love to see it happen, Jim, but, but I'm not sure how it would work because it takes a buy in from the public. I mean, you've got to be responsible and spay and neuter your pets, and there's just too And the money's got to be there. Yeah, and it's just a lot of ifs uh, that go along with it. David, your prediction. Very aspirational. I simply don't think presently it can be done, so no, there shouldn't be a law. Okay, I think there should be a law. I, I wish that. Uh, these pets could be given to very prisons and things like that. They have these programs where pets can be utilized effectively. So I think there should be a way to utilize pets without killing them. Good point. Utilized, not euthanized. There you go, guys. Uh, Winston-Salem City Council has just hired a local recruitment company to fill job openings in the city. Guys, are you okay with tax dollars being used to pay a private company to hire city workers? Or shouldn't that be handled by existing departments? Okay. Not necessarily. I'm glad that it's a local. Anyway, I might have a problem if it were out of state. We've been through this before, but a local company, I have no problem with that. David. And I don't think there's any problem with outsourcing a particular expertise. Recruiting is an expertise. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, Keith, what, what do you think about that? I mean, do they have an HR department? I don't know. I mean, I mean yeah, the city they, does have yeah, a HR department, right? So then why can't they utilize their skills to find someone? Or expand it so that you yeah. hire extra people? Interesting. A mother and her teenage daughter are suing Delta Airlines for $2 million. They say the airline served a man 10 vodka drinks on a nine-hour flight. He was already kind of plastered by then and really much so after the 10 vodkas. Um, he was seated next to him and allegedly started groping both the mother and the daughter repeatedly. Now, who wins this lawsuit, number one? And number two, should alcoholic beverages be barred from commercial flights? Okay. Well, you can't do that, really. I mean, that's, that's not going to work. But they could have cut, why didn't they cut the guy off? A couple of, you know... Flight attendants said, look, we're sorry, but we have a policy, whether they do or not, say yeah. three drink limit or whatever. So we have but, the, the dual question, you know, who wins this lawsuit and should we ban drinks? Yeah, to me, it's very analogous to a dram shop case at a bar or restaurant. Airlines is no different. You should not be serving somebody who you knew or should have known might be impaired in unleashing them on others in the public. Uh, so should there be responsibility if you overserve somebody on a plane? Yes. Does that mean ban alcohol? No. Keith, I, I don't think there should be a responsibility of the flight attendant for serving this person. I mean, do do bars get sued? All the drinking that people do every day and go home and I mean, the yes. groping part. They the gro do if they yes. go out and have a rack or something. The groping part is this person's own personal thing. They should sue him. I don't, I don't know about the, the flight attendants. I, I just don't agree with it. All right. Now, an increasing number of hotels around the world are starting to allow. They, it, they're having these female-only guest uh, hotels. I'd never heard of that until recently. Now, in this day and age of gender rights, are you guys okay with women-only hotels? And will we start to see lawsuits for discrimination against men? What do you think, Ovi? Oh, I'm fine with it. I don't see a problem at all. I mean, w w girls' night out, you know, they can go out and have fun, be around each other and party. But entire ho entire not, hotels with sure. just women, yeah. David? Yeah, I, I, I have no problem with it. Uh, you, you know, um, women historically have been discriminated against to some degree, and that continues, and if they want to go to a place where they're free from that, I, yeah, the, whatever the reason, you know, I, I don't think I'm against it. Yeah, Keith. There's men only clubs, so it shouldn't be a problem. So you don't have a problem? Not, not at all. All right, Congress is now stepping up efforts to identify and study UFOs. This has been going on for a long time, but now they want to ramp it back up because of recent sightings. With all the problems that need solving here on Earth, are you guys okay with spending more taxpayer dollars on UFO research. Okay. Well, the money they're spending on that's a drop in the bucket. They've been, this cover-up's been going on for years and years. Aliens have been among us for 
thousands and thousands of years. And, and it's a legit cover-up because the public is not ready to face the fact that there's aliens here. They would be, these rednecks would be out there with 22 shooting them down, you know. <laughs> David, quickly. <laughs> well, I think I got a couple aliens with me. <laughs> yeah, do. And if we could research that, I would be, uh, I don't know why you're looking at me. <laughs> I don't know why I'm looking at me like uh, what, what do you think? Spend money on UFO research? Uh, yes, absolutely. Because right. you, you never know if it's going to benefit right. us in some form or fashion. All right. Well, finally, this past uh, Sunday, <laughs> this past Sunday marked the last annual body painting day in New York City. The city will no longer allow people to walk around naked wearing only body paint. Guys, do you think public body painting should be allowed? And have you ever had your body painted, Ogie? Well, yeah. I, you know, I'm real close to the body painting community. They're my peeps. I love it. I'm, I'm <laughs> totally into it. Matter of fact, just so happens to have on one of my Ogie ties. Yeah, but you're uh, not body painting living, right now. Through uh, living brush body yeah. painting. Well, uh, I, I personally think my body painter did a pretty good job today. So, <laughs> yeah. David, I mean, David, I, David actually I, is naked. <laughs> you, you, if you really zoomed in, you could tell. Keith, what do you think? Have you ever been body painted? Yes, because you see this body, it absolutely needs to be painted. I mean, it's, it's just great. So you think your body is art? A absolutely <laughs> art. I should be in. Uh, yeah, I'll in tell one you, of these Smithsonian institutes. Uh, yeah, you need to be in an institute, <laughs> but I don't know which one. Uh, well, that's all the time that we have, oh, except for this. Uh, millions of people have been going to see the new Barbie movie. But the only problem is that uh, these folks are wondering, why didn't Barbie and Ken ever kiss? One said one fan, well, I guess uh, Ken is just, uh, you know, he lacks the nerve. And Barbie said, well, that's not all he lacks. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, what does that mean? Uh, we don't all know. Right. Yeah. For all of us body painters, I'm Jim Longworth. We'll see you next week.